one of them is an evil twin, because <laughs> there's always an evil twin, right? Hey guys, last time I was this excited about the product was when some of us sent me their Zigbee bridge. And if you want to know about this product, obviously there's gonna be a link to another video here. But in this video, we're going to talk about an evil twin, or to be honest, much smarter twin, of the Son of Mini that everyone likes. Now this is, or actually this is, Son of Zigbee Mini. That's it. This is exactly carbon copy of the Son of Mini, the Wi-Fi edition, but using Zigbee protocol, and it's super cool. Available on IPF store for $9.90, it's quite attractive if you're looking into automating your lights and you don't want to take out your wall switch or invest into your smart bulbs. Why would you pick a Zigbee version over the Wi-Fi version if Zigbee requires a separate hub? Now, I think the biggest advantage is compatibility with different ecosystems. I have no doubts that after a while you should be able to connect this to different Zigbee hubs and different ecosystems. And all the way around, you should be able to import uh, different Zigbee sensors, including Tuya sensors, into Ewilink application. Now, I know that Ewilink application is probably not your favorite, and in the next video I'm definitely going to cover usage of this using CC2531. Uh, Zigbee uh, uh, USB debugger, but in this video I'm just going to uh, focus on stock functionality. So let's take a closer look and see what is different. This is not the first time I have a Zigbee switch in my hands. I've talked about Zemi Smart Zigbee switch in this video here, so if you're interested, take a look. But this uh, son of Zigbee Mini is much smaller. It does come with a single gun operation unlike the other one, but it also features less uh, hardware issues. Just like in the Zigbee Mini, you'll find six terminals to connect your wires. There are two terminals for live and neutral to power up the device. Additional two terminals to connect the loop responsible for uh, leading the energy to a light bulb. And separate, this time grey in colour, a loop for the switch. Just bear in mind that the switch is actually using 3.3 volt logic, so do not connect electricity, the main electricity into that switch, otherwise you will destroy the device. As you can see in a demo, I have independent control from the switch itself and from the button which is present on the device. But obviously you are interested in a smart functionality, so let's hook it up to a Zigbee Son of Bridge, add a button to control it and see what it's like in use. After pairing the button and setting basic policies, I was able to quickly pair the device to a Son of Zigbee bridge, it only took a couple of seconds, and I could start the operation. Now, as you can see, there was almost no latency whether I was using button or whether I was doing it from the app directly. Now, if I was using a switch or button, the app would also update nearly instantly, showing the current state of the lamp. It looks like everything is working that great, so you probably want to know what's inside. Now, the device is rated for 10 amps. However, inside you'll find a relay which is rated for 16 amps, and something tells me the rating of 10 amps is just in case you're going to end up with inductive current. Looking at the other side of the PCB, there are a couple of interesting things. First of all, Inside we have MG21 Gecko module. This is a very familiar chip because the same chip is present on some of Zigbee Bridge. The advantage of this is that it actually uses Zigbee 3.0 and can act as a router, expanding your mesh network. Looking around you'll also notice there is a lack of external antenna, however on the PCB there is actually a space for SMD connector, so if you want to increase the range of the device or just stick the antenna outside of interference area, you can solder SMD components to connect the antenna. I recently made a video about actually connecting antenna to devices like this, and if you want, check it out, it's going to be displayed somewhere there for you. Lastly, let's talk about the dev pads. Now, there's a plenty of dev pads actually exposed with 5 volts, 3.3 volts, RX and TX, and some more. However, this is a Zigbee device, so it's unlikely you're going to end up flashing it because, 
well, let's face it, there is no point of reinventing the wheel at this point, and something tells me it's going to work with Node Red and uh, CC2531 very nicely. So it looks like you're getting a decent bargain. So if you want to get one for yourself in the video description, you're going to find a link to associated article and the link to purchase this particular device. Now, in my next video, I'm definitely going to try to connect this to CC2531 and integrate it with all the sensors that I have from Xiaomi, Tuya, etc. If you're interested, definitely consider subscribing or just follow me on social media to get that notification when the video is ready. I guess I'm just going to say thank you for someone for sending me this so I could take a look and share my impressions with you. And I'll see you in the next video. So take care. Bye.